Happy Christmas all. Uh, it's Phil here from the Goose Hammock. I am ably assisted by the one and only Big Mac hey. and the other Matt. We're going to talk to you a little bit about what we think of this year so far. How good a season it's been, what's been working. So, beach experts, hey. by the way, dude. So, I mean, can't really do a money bags video without, but this particular color, the silver purple was absolutely, I mean, I'm a night fisherman. This is, this is the ticket for me in the dark. Um, a super honorable mention, and this changes with the spot location. This one's a little bit shallower. It's the hydro minnow. They do like this, like, I think they call it black ghost. It's like a bruise color. And again, for the nighttime guys, these are absolute money. Cast like a rocket. They work awesome. Um, this guy was a standout for me this year. Talking Popper XD. Talking Poppers are pretty much in every surf guy's bag. This is the XD, so they load it up a little bit better. Um, put BMCs on these. So for his castability and for stock fishing out of the package, it's a great deal at 13 bucks. Can't beat it. Another top water, Island X. These guys are awesome. Pretty, pretty local to us on Nantucket. Single hooks, great. Cast like a rocket. Um, and great for catch and release. So we're stepping outside of, everybody knows I love Albies. These are mostly stripers, blue lures. This is a really cool, again with the Island X product, this is a Sidewinder minnow in the pink. I had some really good Albi action on this, and I think that it'll be really cool in the spring um, when the juvie squid around on the sound side. These things cast like a rock, and again, with the single hooks, great for catch and release. Those are my uh, top five standouts for the season. All right, here we go. So now for some boat stuff, you can't have a boat without a dock. Nine inch dock um, catches everything from blue stripers, I mean, even two of them, but uh, yeah, one of my favorites for stripers. Um, a very good fluke here this year. Uh, these are made by Monomo Tackle. These are the uh, fluke spoons. Uh, very good tip of squid, clam, or any uh, kind of bait choice. This is a new one, the Yuzuri Hydra Shot. Oh, sorry, the Monster Shot, the small one. Uh, so this emulates like a small peanut bunker. You can cast it, you can jig it, you can do whatever you want. Um, Albies, blue, stripers, everything, uh, they love them. And for the schoolies, everyone here, if you work here, you must have a top neck pencil. Bone, five inch, you just can't beat it. So come get you one of these. That is true. The truth. <laughs> that is true. So let's talk about, before we go and do offshore, mm -hmm. Oh, the actual the lures. Yes. What was sufficient? What kind of what made you year? Um, so the obviously the night times is what's making it for me. But I actually did a lot of topwater fishing this year. So um, waking up in the morning, trying to uh, get a couple hours in before work. Um, that's why these guys kind of had a standout. So a lot of times it's basically soft plastic bucktails and the minnows for me. Um, but we had a really great, uh, you know, topwater bites. You know, we had great peanut bunker um, around the fall. It really made that bite for me. And then on the ocean sides, like these SP minnows, they dive a little bit deeper and the bite on, on the backside has been really good for the last couple of years um, and just all around the Cape really. But um, it was just, it was pretty phenomenal. I think my numbers were up from last year um, and definitely a lot bigger average fish, you know? So I think they're doing all right out here. Um, and yeah, if the surf guys really want to catch big ones, you got to go at night. Get your headlamps, um, yeah, load up. Cool. So what was your biggest shock, biggest surprise of the year? Um, probably, um, to be totally honest, probably some of the topwater blow-ups with Albies on these guys, you know? Um, everybody fishes their boxies um, and a lot of soft plastic stuff. But it's uh, it's cool stepping outside of like the norm of like what we throw every day. You know, it's like I have a million SPs. I throw them all the time and they work. But um, sometimes having that new lure, um, that, you know, maybe like one of these um, the Island X top waters, uh, you know, made it uh, a lot easier for me to maybe give them a little slack line. They hop off on the beach. It makes it nice, you know. Right. Especially if we had like a week there where everybody was getting hooked. Yep. I was just throwing that. All you know? right. All right. But I also think was it not. The, length, the sheer length of the season for the beach. Yeah, season. it is crazy. I mean, and honestly, if we get a, a decent day, I, they're probably still out there, you know? Yeah. But it's it's getting uh, crazy how long they're sticking around, especially in certain spots, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my thing this year, there was a lot of bait everywhere. I mean, didn't matter where you went, most spots either had peanuts or, you know, uh, large scale bunkers. So um, for me, uh, early season bluefish was probably my favorite part of the season. 
Um, that's how we need, like start off our year with saltwater fishing. Uh, from about the first week of May to like mid-June, blues on the sound side were everywhere. I mean, if you had a kayak from shore, from boat, they were just everywhere. So for me, bluefish this year was phenomenal. Best bluefish in what? 10 years? Yes. Inside. Yeah. Huge. Big, big one. Chunkers. And on the flats, you know, you know up in skinny water, I, me and Matt had some great days on the kayak. And it's just, it's just awesome. You know what I mean? Starby's is going to be a little finicky some days. Uh, blues, they just want to murder everything in the, in the water, you know? We love, love it. Aggressive. Oh, yeah. Especially on soft plastics. Yes. Oh, yeah. And especially as Jim from Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Good for business. Yes. So, okay, right. There's the dog. You bored yet? Nope. So we're going to talk a bit, bit about offshore. Offshore, a bit like the inshore scene in my opinion. Lights out, batshit crazy. Um, phenomenal season. Phenomenal both for the small fish, albeit they got here, they, they came here and they disappeared. Then the giants moved in. Moving off Chatham was, you know, lights out this year. Season closed twice because the quota was called for the big fish. Um, I was fortunate caught the biggest fish. I mean, the dog caught fish. Ironically, we talk about bluefish. Um, my second biggest fish of the year was on a 14 pound bluefish as a bait. We caught them on them, which is cool. So, but the overriding thing I think uh, on the tuna grounds was the jig bite. The jig bite was just like it hasn't been for years and years and years. The ones that were killing it, these are the Nomad Streakers. Okay, we've managed to get them later on in the season. We got them in the 200s. We were only getting them to like the 160s, which is a bit tough in that deeper water. We brought Johnny's jigs this year. Um, obviously, Johnny's, you need to hook them. I need to put the hooks on. We rig them with a BKK assist. Johnny's did really well, all the way up to 300 grams. An old classic, um, Point Duke Deep Force. We brought those in again this year. Jeff got us on the books. Um, they killed it, did really well. And also, as a new product this year, is Ron Z, which we've all known has been an absolute classic. Uh, Ron Z brought out Paddle Tail which did really, really well because it's got a really big profile body. They work great on the stripers. They do a 3X hook set. This is actually the 4X with a swinging head. Um, so those paddles did really, really well. Um, the canyon scene was a little bit quieter this year, mainly because you had to remortgage your house to get there. And it slowed it down a bit. We lost our first swordfish at the boat, um, which is a bit of a shame. But the, the fishing at the canyons, it was one minute it was on, one minute it's off, a bit spotty, but there's a good yellowfin bite, um, some good um, big eyes were caught, and the swords actually was really strong this year. So we did quite a lot in the deep dropping environments. Um, but like I say, coming back to ensure, the jig bite is what set everybody alight. Um, so much so we're gonna be bringing our own jigs out for next season. Interesting, and we're gonna we're gonna rig them with slightly lighter hooks. As you can see, these are really these are big true four X's. Um, because for all of our customers who have caught and landed a giant bluefin on a jig, it sucks. Um, it's four or five hours of pain, and the chances are um, the fish isn't doing so well when you get it to the boat, and you might have to spend an hour reviving it. What some of the captains have been doing is bringing in re-rigging these jigs with lighter hooks. So if you catch a 90 inch fish, you know, you play with it for 10, 15 minutes and then sit, lock the drag down, point the rod and you actually straight the hook out, uh, which is great for the fish because it's now not got jewelry on it. Um, and it's cost you a few bucks to put a new assist hook on and you still keep your jig. So it's good for you, good for the fish. And of course, if you catch a smaller fish, a recreational size fish, you'll still be able to get it to the boat. So kind of everybody wins, which I think is gonna be good. And, and obviously we're focusing there, we're bringing our own jig rods out. We've got the Tommy Long Knot. I'm uh, very, very happy to be launching our own uh, tuna jigging rod. Uh, we've got the Tommy Short Knot, which is gonna be the conventional version. You could ask Tommy about that. The other thing was the bar bite actually was pretty strong this year on the quiet. Um, we had one day we went eight for 12 on small bluefin at uh, Crab Ledge, which is really good. So the bars did really well as well. Um, but as you went further offshore, he's basically jig. Sometimes you're, you're jigging for like three seconds, maybe five. Um, it's really cool. So that's what really set everybody on fire. But don't be a sleeper on the bars because uh, there's nothing quite like seeing tuna smash the bar. Um, so like great year. Um, it actually closed the fishing tuna. You know, went all the way into December. Commercial is closed. Closed last Friday, I think, a week ago. Um, interestingly, that. Um, there's still bluefin off there. Two weeks ago, I was watching bluefin 
um, bus busted on herring off Norsett Beach. So just like the striped bass that, you know, they were in Monomoy two weeks ago. Yeah. The, uh, the, the fish have stayed longer, so global warming is working for us. Uh, I don't think it's that because it's bloody freezing now. But the bass have been hanging around and the tuna have been hanging around. And that's because there's so much bait. We've got, you know, there's tons of pogies, more than ever been. The mackerel is really good. Um, we had sorry washing up on Brewster beaches later on this year. There's so much bait in the water. And we had sand eel. Yeah. So to wrap it up, I think um, 2022 was probably the best fishing year in the 10 years that I've yes. lived yeah. here. Um, it was really cool. Consistently and, uh, off the beach, it was just... Yeah. I caught a 43-inch bass off the beach. I was very happy. There oh, you go. God. It was great. Many. So that's our favourites. That's what we think. It was a really cool year. We're hoping 2023 is going to be just as good or better. Cheers. Can't come soon enough. Cheers. Hey, bye. Oh,